Howdy. Today we're going to check out the worst and best of Bob's Burgers. Isn't that right, Boo? And since we're checking out Bob's Burgers, that can only mean one thing. We're cooking Kanga Bangers. Kangaroo Sausages. What do you mean we should be cooking burgers? What do you got against kangaroo sausages? They're highly efficient and very low fat. This is not low fat! Well, whatever we make, Bob's Burgers is one of the most raw and authentic cartoons I've ever seen. The characters aren't too overly nice like a cheap sitcom, but they're not too overly cruel either. They feel real and honest, but at the same time, sometimes very awkward and uncomfortable. And funnily enough, that's what the real world can be. Bob's Burgers isn't a show that's always pleasant and reassuring, but it's not always tiringly cynical either. It's mostly just a pleasant, intriguing experience with ups and downs with characters I like. However, when Bob's Burgers misses, it really misses. With such unabashed realism in its characters, we get some really cringy, uncomfortable situations or just really irritating characters. The kind of situations and people that leave us in a sea of awkwardness. Or characters occasionally go completely out of character and become selfish, horrible people. My goal is to give you a little taste of how amazing Bob's Burgers can be, but also know which episodes to definitely skip. So anyway, on to the five worst and best Bob's Burgers episodes. Well done, can do. For the fifth worst, Beef Squatch. This episode has a notorious reputation among fans, and understandably so. Bob and Jean get their own talk show segment and become horrible to each other. You see, Jean dresses up like a gorilla and the audience loves him. Which is great. But instead of Bob being proud of his 11-year-old son and supporting him, he purposely sabotages him, repeatedly feeding him hot jalapenos, kitty litter, and even assaults him at the end. Jeebus. That would be great. <laughs> Even if Gene wasn't the nicest guy in this episode, he's 11 years old for Pete's sake. But even he can tell, Bob is absolutely boring the crowd with his stupid self-absorbed jokes. Chopping up some tomatoes and then I'm gonna, uh... <laughs> You right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. So rather than us witnessing the Belchers have the greatest marketing opportunity of their life, we have to watch them be absolute monsters to one another. It's cringy, it's ugly, and it brings out the absolute worst in these otherwise very nice characters. Well, I am doing great. How about you, son? Great here, Dad. There's not even a side plot or a bit of Teddy on the side to ease the tension. It's just this petty family conflict the whole way through, until Linda's finally had enough and shows her bazongas on camera to get them fired. So in other words, she walks out empowered, but possibly a bit humiliated. Tell him to quit. Tell him to quit. Him. him. Will I quit? This is not the Bob or the Gene I know. The real Bob I know is a kind father who would never put his son through pain, yet alone assault him. He would put his selfish motives aside and support his son when he's in the spotlight. That's what Gene's always wanted to be, an actor. The real Bob and Gene we know are a team, and this episode does not do them justice. And for the fifth best Bob's Burgers episode, Bob Actually. Ah, oh, this episode is full of just precious moments. It's like a warm chocolate chip muffin or a nice cold bowl of perfectly green grapes on a hot summer day. I'm not normally that into Valentine's Day. In fact, I like to call it Singles Awareness Day for the large portion of the world that aren't in a relationship. Because seriously, does a lot of the world need another day to feel even more lonely? Anyway, despite this being a Valentine's episode, it actually gives me that Valentine's spirit without feeling bitter. Unlike some Valentine's specials, it's not over-the-top schmaltz Instead, it's about these very real relationships we know in Bob's Burgers world, with all their ups and downs. From Bob to Linda to Louise to Jean to even Tina, they all get their Valentine's moments. But the best part of the episode for me, this lady right here. The other day I was in the grocery store buying some light bulbs and ice cream, and I could tell the cashier didn't like my baggy pants. She is just precious. This is the most hilariously white hip-hop dancer you will ever see. I mean, I'm white as two toothpaste and this lady makes me feel a slightly darker shade. Why are we checking out this adorable dance class? Because Bob, with the pushing of Teddy, has decided to learn hip-hop dancing as Linda's gift for Valentine's Day. 
which may single-handedly be the most cute thing he's ever done. I'd tell you more, but I wouldn't want to spoil this finish for you. What about Gene? Well, for his Valentine's Day, he meets a big, beautiful woman who is apparently the cafeteria substitute. And this young man may have just well gone through his puberty via chocolate. You're not Hildy. Sei un po' di capro cattivo. Vattene, vattene, da cattivo in della. And Tina's trying to, uh, sky kiss Jimmy Jr. while not getting diarrhea. Because, well, it's Tina. And trampolines and prunes do that, you know. Anyway, for me, every joke here works great. Every dialogue piece is dripping with charm. And every character feels like they're authentic selves. If you're just starting Bob's Burgers, I think Bob actually is a great place to start. There's gonna be some profanity coming at you, so cover your ears if you can't handle the B word. And for the fourth worst, Mummy Boy. Oh, oh, oh dear. Does the title really make it sound like a winner episode? If you like Gene as a character, I don't recommend watching this episode. Because this episode may make you start disliking him. The strong relationship between Linda and Gene is normally cute enough, but this episode makes that relationship seem legitimately creepy and uncomfortable. You see, Linda is finally joining a club outside her family for a good 10 weeks. Good for her. But this weekend club meeting is on the same day that Linda and 11-year-old Gene normally have a spa day, where they get in the bath together and wear those cleansing masks. Hmm. Anyway, since you're here, how about some scented moisturizer? Freud would have a field day, but anyway, you get the picture. When Linda tries to tell Jean she won't be available, Jean throws a tantrum and pretty much spends the entire episode constantly demanding that Linda must be serving him all the time. Ugh. And at some points, the level of control he demands comes off as kind of weird. Ah! I never should have let you come. I never should have let you come. What? I've been far too permissive with you, and look where it's got us. The apparent great revelation that Gene has that he should not be a selfish jerk comes in at the last 40 seconds and feels shoehorned in. I swear it was written in at the last second by the writers because they forgot to make Gene a redeemable character. This one's early on in the worst list, though, because I found the side story kind of cute. You see, Bob, Tina, and Louise decide to learn to box in the basement. Apparently, though, none can even manage to punch a pillow without crying. Seriously? They're siblings. Haven't these two ever had ruffles or scuff-ups as a kid? It's a very underdeveloped story, but the characters are all charming, and when Teddy steps in, it gets even better. Dad's scared to spar with us. He's supposed to be teaching us how to fight, but all we're doing is hitting beef chunks. Is beef chunks what you call it, Gene Dow? No, he said it's women's group. Got it. I would have much preferred the episode to be about this, rather than the uncomfortable relationship between Linda and Gene. It's just... Ugh. To me, this episode just feels uncomfortable. And for the fourth best Bob's Burgers episode, The Hauntening. There's a murder afoot, or is there? Like a real horror, The Hauntening is all about setting the atmosphere. The first time I watched this, I found this a legitimately creepy episode, almost a little scary. I found myself feeling the family's distress as things got worse and worse. You see, Louise thinks she is unscarable and never gets scared on Halloween. So Bob and Linda bring their kids to their own spook house, which at first doesn't seem to work at all. Like, it's tacky in all the unscary ways it doesn't work. Oh no! Mom, angel hair. But this leads to a surprisingly scary mystery setup, with the Belchers scared for their lives in an old rickety house that has supposedly belonged to one of Mort's dead clients. Like SpongeBob's Graveyard Shift episode, the hauntening shows us that you don't necessarily need gore to frighten your audience. It's all about the build-up and the slow ticking of the atmosphere, until suddenly, the knife drops. This one's actually the highest rated episode on IMDb, but it's only on the list for a personal reason. And that is, I come to Bob's Burgers mainly to chill with these characters, not necessarily be scared. But if you're in the mood for some spooky chills with Bob and his family, then The Hauntening is a great watch. Dad. Yes? I feel like you're doing a really good job as a dad. Thank you, Jane. I'm having a good childhood. Okay, great. And for the third worst, Late Afternoon in the Garden with Bob and Louise. This definitely falls into that cringe category I talked about of Bob's Burgers episodes. Because here, we watch Bob continually cow to an obnoxious, permissive parenting soccer mum and her self-entitled kid. Why? So Bob can grow plants in a shared garden. 
Woohoo! This poor guy goes so gung ho for a garden. He really doesn't have much in the way of excitement in his life, does he? Oh, my dirt. My sweet, sweet, sweet dirt. He's so happy about his garden that he's willing to have Louise's bully, Logan, working inside the shop, who continues to harass Louise on the side. Even when Louise is incredibly hurt by this, Bob just doesn't seem to care. It's again, Bob being very out of character. Even Linda is resentful of it all because she hates the mum. These simple people were doing the best they could with what little they had in their sad underperforming restaurant. Hey, don't read that. In other words, every single person except Bob is miserable in this episode but they don't care. Generally, I tend to find that episodes based on watching characters foam at the mouth with repressed resentment are among the worst cartoon episodes of a show. And I have never got the appeal of why any decent writer would make an episode like this. But most importantly, this isn't the Bob I know. It's great that he's enjoying a hobby, but Bob is so obsessed with gardening that he's willing to compromise his morals and is willing to see his family treated poorly. Even seeing his daughter bully just for this stupid garden. A kid's playing in a sandbox and he finds a welding mask. <laughs> the reason for all this? Well, it's contrived and barely worth mentioning. Logan and his mum run the community garden and Bob offers to let Logan work at the shop to brown nose his way into the community garden, resulting in him suddenly losing all his spine and backbone. He comes around in the end and apologizes to Louise, but it's certainly not worth the long trip. I definitely vote to skip this one. Louise, please, those are my babies. What? These, these are your babies. Yes, those are, oh. You should dig your way right out of this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get it, cause you know, uh, digging and uh, you got it. I keep the heat at about five. Oh, and for the third best, Broadcast Wagstaff School News. After a lot of thought and, well, because this has to be a top five list because I'm just weird like that, I decided to put this in place of Kids Rob a Train. But I really like both episodes. If you like, consider Kids Rob a Train my personal number six best. But there's just so many funny moments in this episode. And the concept itself is just so hilariously silly. Tina stumbles upon a terrifying news story. The Mad Poopa. Someone who mysteriously does their business around the school in places they shouldn't be doing it by surprise. So Tina has to track him down. I, I don't think I'm spoiling too much in you knowing it's a he. But the best part of this episode, seeing Gene pretend to be Bob. For me, this whole bit has to be one of the most funny parts of the entire series. No, I, oh my uh, God. Oh he's God. really good, uh, he's good. Oh. He's not good, Lynn. He's not good, Lynn. He's good. I don't know, I Gene, like what, Bob? Lynn, Lynn, what? Gene, Lynn, Pop Lynn, Gene. I'm leaving. Oh, he's so cute. Even the end is surprisingly, well, epic. Tina discovering the true identity of the pooper within the darkness of the theater and Tina's final confrontation with them. Will they do their business where they shouldn't or will they hold it like everyone else? Now you could probably guess, this is a concept that could have easily been made in bad taste because, well, it's poop. But part of how they keep it tasteful is by never showing the dumps and not making the dumps the focus of the story. It's more about the mystery and how the characters react to this stupid and silly situation. Tina really shines here, being her inquisitive but eccentric moral self. How could dog poop make it all the way up two flights of stairs and into the library on a shoe without being wiped off? Teleportation? Let's experiment. Even Tammy, the character I consider the worst in the entire show, is relatively tolerable here, but more on her later. Wagstaff School News feels surprisingly epic and gripping. If you tune in for nothing else here, at least check out Jean pretending to be Bob. It's got to be one of the funniest skits in the show. I can't believe my daughter is the butler. I have no daughter. Oh, don't say that, Jean. Yes, he should say that. And the second worst Bob's Burgers episode is Sacred Couch. Oh, everything is just over the top here. Essentially, we're just watching the entire family cave to Linda's obsessiveness over this garbage old couch. And while we're there, maybe we could get a new couch. <laughs> Bobby, no! The entire episode, I just found myself saying, get rid of it. Ugh. But even when the couch is on the side of the road, drenched in dirty puddles with a million stains on it, they apparently still want this stupid couch back. This isn't mentally healthy, what we're seeing here. This is OCD. I'm really sorry to do this, but we need that couch back. It's ours and you're not gonna burn it. The end message of this one should have been simple. Objects can be let go of. People are what matter. 
uh, sorry, ghosts or people or what matter. But no, apparently they want to hold on to this piece of junk even though it smells. Ugh, Mom, we get it. The couch is just a thing, and when things are old, you get rid of them. This is one of the most frustrating episodes of the series. It's got a rich, full life ahead of it. Ooh. Oh, it, it's gonna shake that off. Yeah, that wasn't that sad. For goodness sakes, you two. You're the voices of reason in this family. It's a freaking couch. We gotta go get it. Hmm, sounds like you just said, we've gotta go get it. Like, right now. No, you don't. This is just OCD. Ugh. Linda's overly sensitive to a couch that most of the family don't even want to sit on. I understand the sentimental value, but to the viewer, it's just not enough to relate to the characters. Why not say, let's look forward to the future so we can make new memories with a new couch? There were very few laughs, no character development, it was just an awful episode. You can be comfortable almost anywhere, whether it be a plush chair or a hard rock on the ground. What matters is what's going on in here. But this episode's message is just broken. Moving on. And the second worst Bob's Burgers episode is... Topsy. Now this is what I call a theatrical episode. Throughout this episode, there's an element of danger and mystery. All starting because of Louise. For her next project, she suddenly can't use her diorama. In fact, the teacher smashes it. Jeebus. Oh no! Oops! Why did I throw that down? So instead, she must cover Thomas Edison. But she will have her revenge. You see, the librarian tells her about an interesting bit of trivia about the fellow. I should say up front though, I recommend reading the Wikipedia article if you want to hear the full story. But as far as the episode's concerned, Edison electrocuted an elephant named Topsy. But it's also worth mentioning that Topsy trampled a couple of people before Edison zapped her. Well, it says that Topsy trampled three people. Well, yeah, she's a big fat elephant! So Louise decides to restage the events of Edison's electrocution of Topsy on stage to get revenge on her teacher. And and soil the reputation of his precious Edison. Anyway, this is actually one of the best episodes for minor characters working together. Mr. Fishowner and Gale end up singing a surprisingly epic, graceful composition during the stage performance. And who would honestly expect that these two would actually go together really well? Apparently they even have a romantic chemistry. Should we fool around back here while we wait? Okay, just let me lick my lips. Oh. Well, good for them. I guess they're both eccentric. Episodes like this also bring out that really intriguing aspect of Louise. That she can be devious yet bold in nature, but still sometimes has a good heart, and is willing to stick up for what she thinks is right. But she can also go overboard to do anything to get her revenge, including a dark, dangerous performance in front of the whole school. Topsy has an epic third act too. From the music to the build-up to when the electric switch is finally flicked. This is pure theatrics at its best. This man! The scene with Tina dressed up as an elephant on the electric floor is easily among the most powerful, terrifying scenes in the whole series. And when the sparks started flying and the school lost power, I felt legitimately terrified for Tina. Topsy's a thrilling, mysterious episode with a darker twist. And it's definitely among the most memorable Bob's Burgers episodes I've seen. I'm okay. Oh, oh thank God. Oh, God. Oh. Tina. And before we get to the number ones, just the usual quick honorable and dishonorable mentions. I'll try to go through these quicker than usual because, well, there's a lot of good Bob's Burgers episodes, and I wanted to include as many as possible. For the honorable mentions, Thelma and Louise, except Thelma is Linda. After Louise gets in trouble at school, Linda is forced to meet with Mr. Frond, but it turns out Louise was just standing up for a kid when he was bullied. So Linda's torn between following school policy and her own moral code. It's just a fun episode that shows Linda bonding with Louise and it better highlights their similarities that we generally don't see. The Deepening. A giant mechanical shark causes chaos on the town. Some people are pretty split on this episode. Personally, I didn't find it that amusing because I just got tired of the constant grief this stupid shark caused. But a lot of people do find this episode really funny, and it's a great culmination of all the characters in the town working together to get rid of this shark. It's over. No, Bob. Die! 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 Now it's over. 
The Belchies. What an adventure this was, and a great way to start the second season. The kids explore an abandoned taffy factory. Weirdly, this is actually an episode that gives me those Dungeons and Dragons vibes, with the kids stumbling upon traps and mazes as they fumble their way through this abandoned factory. But there's also a cute little side story about Bob and Linda trying to spice up their love life. I think The Belchies captures some of the best of early Bob's Burgers. A simple, straightforward story with a Belcher family at their most charming. Brunch Squatch. This one seems to have a lot of Bob's Burgers fans split, as its constantly varying artwork styles is either well loved for its creativity, or hated for how distracting it is. Either way, I think it deserves respect for the production team using fan art from so many different artists. As for the dishonorable mentions, Nude Beach. An episode revolving around one of the most annoying, dislikable characters in the show. Woohoo! As if Hugo wasn't an annoying enough health inspector, how about they bring an even more insufferable guy to take his place? What? Tommy, that's crazy. You just carry around bags of rat turds in your pocket? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. This is seriously the second most annoying character I've ever seen on the show. Thank Jeebus he was just a minor character, but boy he is memorably bad. All That Gene. This is actually the lowest rated Bob's Burgers episode on all of IMDb. And while I can see why, as it's a bit unpleasant, I also see it as very authentic and real. I can remember also being this excited young kid on stage and thinking I'm brilliant, and learning that in reality, there's a lot of other people on stage that are just as talented, if not more. And as an adult, I can assure you, YouTube is very proficient at teaching you the many, many, many other people far more talented than you that you're competing for views with. Sorry, I'm, I'm okay. 2020 was a rough year. Anyway, this is a really tough lesson, but I think it's a lesson Gene has to learn, particularly if he wants to get into theater and arts. When you see all this talent, you have to learn a bit of humility. I'd love to know other people's thoughts on this episode. If you have any thoughts on it, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, on to the number ones. I like to butterfly them too. It helps get the fat out. Sleeping with the Frenemy. This was an episode that was so bad, so unbelievably rage-inducing and aggravating to watch. I literally rage quit it within the first four minutes of the episode. An entire episode with the most annoying character in the show staying with the Belchers. Once again, we get my least favorite cartoon trope of all time. The most annoying, stupid cartoon trope in the world. Known by TV tropes as the thing that would not leave. In other words, someone staying in the house of our main characters, overstaying their welcome, being ungrateful, horrible, and making us all want to see them run over by a steamroller. Let's make it even worse, though, by making it a child of the 1%. An over-entitled little monster of the 0.1%. I had to force myself Clockwork Orange style to watch this episode. And you know what? I think Tammy may just make it into the top 10 worst cartoon characters of all time. She is that bad. My show's on. <laughs> So the story? You could guess most of it. Tammy's parents forget Tammy when they go on a cruise ship, so she stays with the Belchers. There goes Tammy's cruise ship. At least I won't have to hear her annoying voice for a week. No, 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 stop, stop, stop! Tina tolerates this little monster because she wants a merit badge. Which I can only assume is a merit badge in being a spineless little twit. Because this is just horrible to witness. <laughs> Spring break I was supposed to be having. I was supposed to be kissing bee pots on a boat. <laughs> now I've got fat hair and glasses. But you know what would make this episode somehow even worse? If Tina finally meets a nice guy and he decides to go with Tammy instead. And we have to watch Tina be miserable through this whole episode and just watch in sadness. It's horrible. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that Tina really, really wants a boyfriend. Which is perfectly normal. Who really wants to see Tina miserable. At this point, we all want to see her have a relationship. She has worked for it, man. Whoa. Uh... So are we just gonna keep watching, or...? Keep watching. Okay, I'll get a chair. Give me one, too. I've rage quit this episode so many times because it just gets under my skin. It's all about resentment. This isn't only the worst Bob's Burgers episode, this is one of the worst cartoon episodes, period. Maybe not objectively, but subjectively, I hate it that much. And I think the number one best Bob's Burgers episode is... Glued, Where's My Bob? Weird, really. One of the most warm, welcoming, and hilarious episodes of Bob's Burgers consists of one simple plot point. Bob accidentally glued his rear to the toilet. 
Is it possible it's glue? I don't know. Why? Because I'm stuck to the toilet! Only Bob's Burgers could accomplish a feat like that. And for their 100th episode, no less. You see, a magazine is coming to interview Bob, but Louise puts superglue on the toilet as a practical joke for Gene. Bob sits down and can't get off the can, and only a few hours till his magazine interview. Awesome chaos ensues. The town finds out, and Bob's friends desperately try to get his park keister off the Thunderbox before the food magazine arrives to interview him. So many of the characters get a chance to shine in this episode. Ken Jeong as Dr. Yap, one of my favorite characters. Or Louise as Kristen Schaal, another of my favorite actors. It also contains probably my favorite song in the entire series. Vacuum, can't let them see me with my pants down. I'll be doing interviews and feeling just fine. Today is gonna be a great day. I'll be out of there in no time. There's just a great spirit to this episode. It brings together the best aspects of Bob's Burgers all in one. And by the end, I was at the edge of my seat wanting to see Bob get off the edge of his seat. The songs, the pacing, the jokes, the dialogue, I think everything was a slam dunk in this episode. There's a beautiful beginning, middle, and end. And I personally consider Glued Where's My Bob the best Bob's Burgers episode. Looking good. Hungry boo? All right. Anyway, Bob's Burgers isn't necessarily a show for everyone, but from the brilliant voice acting of this show, to the very real, authentic feeling characters, to the very honest feeling of real human connection and warmth, I can say comfortably, it's one of those shows I regularly turn on just to chill out a bit, and I highly recommend it. It's sometimes got better writing than modern Simpsons, and generally isn't as harsh as modern Family Guy, with its own personal touch of character. Anyway, if you feel I missed any particular episodes, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Say goodbye, boo. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Alright, alright, we'll eat in a minute. You know, it's very environmentally friendly and low fat as well, only 2% fat compared to beef, which has about 8 to 10% fat. How's the kangaroo, boo? Good. Some people find kangaroo a little bit gamey, but personally, I'm a real fan of it. Kangaroo bolognese. There's nothing like it.